Alright, if you see me looking off to the side uh, every so often, I apologize for that, but that's because I have so much to talk about in this video that um, I actually have to have a bunch of notes pulled up on my phone off to the side on my desk here. Anyway, some of you may have seen the previous video I made about some of Friday Night Funkin's technical flaws, where I more specifically focused on the chart editor and how just clunky and terribly designed it is. But between that video and the recording of this video right now, I did a ton more thinking and I realized Friday Night Funkin's technical flaws are worse than I thought. And the more I thought about it, the more I'm starting to believe that if these technical flaws are not fixed, the full-ass game might fail. I'm going to start by doing just a quick recap of my previous deep dive into Friday Night Funkin's technical flaws, and I am going to talk about some of those talking points in relation to um, the things that they were promising for the full-ass game in their Kickstarter post. The first thing they promised for the full-ass game was easy custom song integration. And, um, I mean, it was the main talking point of my last, uh, Technical Flaws Deep Dive video, but, uh, let me just sum up what I said about the game's chart editor, uh, in this one clip. Friday Night Funkin's chart editor is dog shit. Now, here's the thing. If they want to make custom song integration easy in the full-ass game, they need a better chart editor. Nobody is going to want to make customs for this game if the chart editor that the game comes with barely works most of the time. Now, another thing I talked about in that previous deep dive video is how much of a mess Friday Night Funkin's file hierarchy is. And we can see this just by diving into the assets folder for the desktop version of Friday Night Funkin'. This is the latest version that I'm aware of that can be downloaded on itch. And if we go into the data here, you can see that, let's open Blammed for instance, we have the chart data for Blammed in here, but if we go back into the assets and go to music, the audio data for Blammed is in this folder. Let me repeat that, the audio and chart data for songs in Friday Night Funkin' are split across two separate folders. If we compare this to Clone Hero, Clone Hero has a single songs folder, and all of your songs are contained in it, and they are easy to import by simply copying and pasting your download into the folder. And then, once you go inside the folder for an individual song in Clone Hero, you will see that not only are the songs audio and chart data both contained within that same folder, but also the song's metadata, which is a perfect segue into my third point. The Friday Night Funkin' team promised easy modability on the full-ass game Kickstarter page, saying that even the most casual player with little to no experience programming can get into modding this game. But the problem is, this game in its current state is completely inaccessible to mod! Thinking about this is making me frustrated, because in the last video I talked about the fact that if you change a single entry in a single song's metadata, it causes the entire process of the game running to fall apart. And the reason for this is that a lot of the game's information is hard-coded, meaning that it is stored inside the executable for the game. This little file right here that I have highlighted, and if you want to crack this open, you need special software and special knowledge and skills reading through the code in the executable if you want to change a given song's metadata. Whereas to change a song's metadata in Clone Hero, literally all you have to do is open the song.ini text file. Everything you could possibly want to edit about the song's metadata is in this text file, and you can change it at will. So... I said earlier that a lot of Friday Night Funkin's data is hard-coded into the exe file. Um, I stand corrected. Way too much of this game's data is hard-coded into the exe file. Which means that it is completely inaccessible to mod in its current state. So, something needs to be done about the problems with the in-game chart editor, 
the game's file hierarchy, and the hard-coded data if the Friday Night Funkin' team wants to deliver on some of their promises for the full-ass game. So that was just a brief recap of my last deep dive into Friday Night Funkin's technical flaws. But between when I recorded that video and when I'm recording this video right now, I saw a video by Tech Rules. You should go to subscribe to him, by the way. He does a lot of cool breakdowns of video games and stuff like that. A link to the video I watched will be in the description. And in his video, he talked about a few other points that I didn't exactly think about. First off, he went over how way too much of Friday Night Funkin's data is hard-coded. Um, kind of like I did in my last deep dive. But the thing I really want to talk about with his video is the week 7 update on Newgrounds. Now, I have the Newgrounds version pulled up. I'm not going to play it yet because I experienced tons of issues with it, which I will also talk about later in this video. But one of the things he touches upon is the cutscenes in week 7. Now, if I remember him saying correctly, Haxflixel cannot natively play MP4 video files. So, Essentially, if my understanding is correct, the way the cutscenes in the Newgrounds version of Friday Night Funkin' Week 7 work is that the video file for the cutscene is streamed directly from Newgrounds' servers to the computer, and the game is kind of pushed aside while the cutscene plays. Then when the cutscene ends, the game comes back, and you're now playing the game sort of offline cached in your browser. And... This, I believe, is the main reason why Friday Night Funkin' Week 7 is not downloadable on Itch yet, even after so long uh, since it came out on Newgrounds. They need to figure out how to get those cutscenes to properly play in a desktop version of the game that will not involve constantly switching between the game and the cutscenes. Now look, we finally pulled into the Newgrounds version of Friday Night Funkin'. Um, I have the audio muted because I don't want the music to overpower my voice or anything. Anyway, another one of the problems that Tech Rules talked about in his video for Friday Night Funkin' was the issue of latency. To sum latency in one sentence, if you want to get a sick on a given note when you're playing a song in this game, you're forced to hit the note early, no matter what. You could have the perfect hardware that would have no delay between when you press a button and when your computer picks it up, and the game itself would have a latency problem that forces you to hit those notes early like you're supposed to. Now, for modding engines like Kate Engine, for example, there's an offset setting in the options menu that allows you to change how much the song is offset by, and this helps to compensate for the latency problem by either making the notes come in early or making the notes delayed compared to the rest of the song. Now, if I go into the options menu of the Week 7 update of Friday Night Funkin' and I open the preferences, you can see we've got naughtiness, down scroll, flashing menu, camera zooming on beat, FPS counter, auto pause. Where's the offset setting? Kate Engine has an offset setting and Kate Engine came out before Week 7. Why does week 7 not have an offset setting? When it comes to certain quality of life features, the modders are beating the developers of the base game to the punch. That is not a good look for the base game if you take a step back and think about it. Now, I'm going to go into a couple more things that I noticed with the week 7 version of Friday Night Funkin'. First off, in the description of the game, it says, If the game freezes during load, refresh the page. Now. When I tried to get the game started up, for the sake of this video, I had the game freeze twice during loading, and then twice more, it stalled trying to display the title screen after it had completely loaded. If this game was well built and well designed, the number of times that it froze or stalled while I was just trying to get it running would not be four it would be zero. My computer has an AMD Ryzen 5, a GeForce RTX 2060, and 16 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance RAM on it. It's not a problem with my computer. It's a problem with the game's inability to load itself because of how poorly designed it is in its current state. Now, there's one more little gripe I have about this game's design, and admittedly, it's a minor flaw, but it's a very fundamental one that should have been addressed long ago. If we go into the free play mode, the first thing you may notice is that in week 3, 
Philly Nice is not actually called Philly Nice in the game. Philly Nice is the actual name of the song. In the game, it's just called Philly. And then if we go down to Satin Panties uh, and Winter Horrorland, you can see those are just fine. But if we go into story mode and start going through the weeks, we'll start with week three. You can see the tracks say Pico, Philly, and Blammed. That's cool. But when we go into week four, you may be able to see why Philly Nice is just called Philly in the game. You see where it says the name of the song Satin Panties down there in the lower left of the screen? That's a dash separating the two words in the song's name. The reason they just called Philly Nice Philly in the game is because the font that they use to display the track names in the story mode week selection does not have spaces. Let me repeat that. There are no spaces in the font that you are seeing in the lower left. They have to make do with dashes. Now, the week six version of Friday Night Funkin' also had this problem with the lack of spaces in that font. And that was released back in early February of this year. It's been at least a couple of months between the release of the week six update and the week seven update. Somewhere in that time they spent working on the week 7 update, they should have found a way to fix this font in the story mode track list to put spaces instead of dashes in these song names that have more than one word in them. Look, if we go to week 5, Winter Horrorland has the same problem. That font literally has no spaces in it. And like I said at the beginning of this segment, this is a very minor detail but it's also a very basic one that should have been fixed the second they figured out they were going to be taking development of this game seriously. Now look, I'm sure you're probably wondering why I'm so upset. And in fact, I'm even more upset than I was in the last deep dive that I did. And the reason I'm even more upset this time around is because I love this game. That may sound weird to say, but I am so incredibly upset because I love this game and I don't want to see it fail but with all these technical flaws present that I believe the Friday Night Funkin' team should have focused on fixing before adding more content if they continue down this route of adding more weeks to the game before making the game in a more playable state this is why I believe that when the release of the full-ass game comes around, people will have started to notice the game's technical flaws by that point, and they will have stopped playing and the full-ass game will fail. And that's not what I want. I'm sure that's not what any avid players of this game want. But ultimately, the biggest thing that matters in a rhythm game, and by extension any video game in general, is a smooth playing experience. And if Friday Night Funkin' isn't able to deliver a smooth playing experience anytime soon, because as it stands now, the playing experience is in fact less than smooth, then I think we're going to see the full ass game eventually lose traction. Now look, this isn't just me endlessly ranting about the fact that Friday Night Funkin', you know, sometimes refuses to work, and sometimes it is, like, so technically flawed that for an avid rhythm gamer like myself, it it's just unbearable to play on some days. I want to talk about something the Friday Night Funkin' team could do going forward to give the full-ass game the greatest chance of succeeding. And this is something I've talked about, um in both my previous deep dive and several times before that in, you know, on my live streams and on social media. And I'm going to keep harping on it because I think it is the big thing that'll make this game the most successful it can be. Haxflixel is a powerful engine. I will say that much. You know, its big selling point is that it can make a game into a Windows executable, a Mac OS app, um, a mobile app, an HTML5 interactive, and a Flash interactive, and that's all cool and good. But for a game made in hacks to be compatible with so many different systems, you have to sacrifice a lot of features that make a good game. I'm willing to bet some of these latency problems that are present when you're playing the game are still present, and they're apparently being so difficult for the Friday Night Funkin' team to fix, 
solely because of Haxflixel's limitations. Now, like I said, this is something I've mentioned in a lot of live streams and a lot of social media posts in the past, but I really think the best solution for the full ass game moving forward is to completely ditch Haxflixel and rebuild the game from the ground up in Unity. Unity is exponentially more powerful than Hax, and that shows in the fact that it's simply the go-to game engine for most indie game developers. Games as powerful as Kerbal Space Program have been built in Unity, and Clone Hero, which is an excellent rhythm game and pretty much the de facto Guitar Hero game for avid players right now, was built in Unity as well. So I'm going to reiterate because I think I pretty much phrased this the exact same way in my previous deep dive video. But I think it would really benefit the Friday Night Funkin' team to rebuild the game from the ground up in Unity or some other engine that is more powerful than Hacks. Because while learning a more powerful engine like that may take a lot longer to learn, it will be easier in the long run to have some of these quality of life features that should have been present early on, such as the lack of latency or the ability to add offset, um... The notes dropping, that was a big issue in early versions of the game. It probably would have been easier to just not have that issue present in the first place if the game was built in a more powerful engine. And I mean, if the developers of the game aren't willing to learn Unity for some reason, the full-ass game Kickstarter made an absurd amount of money. They could probably use that to hire some game developers who have experience with Unity and are more than willing to work for them to rebuild the game in Unity and continue work on it from there. And especially with how many features they plan on cramming into the game, I don't think a less powerful engine like Hax is capable of handling the sheer amount of features that they plan on putting in. One of the reasons Unity is so much more powerful of a game engine than Hax is because games that are exported from Unity are more optimized. They have better file hi hierarchies. I mean, just take a look at what I showed with Clone Hero earlier. They have more options that you can tweak to make the play experience as smooth as possible on your given setup. And Unity has native support for playing MP4 files. You can put an MP4 file into Clone Hero and play it in the background as you're playing the game, for example. One of the things Tech Rules mentioned is that their plan to animate the cutscenes for week 7 in Hacks, because Hacks cannot play MP4 files, is to use a sprite sheet with a bunch of different pieces of Tank Man scattered around it as he speaks. Like, try and imagine, for a second, having to reach into a pile of things, grab something to show it off, and then put it back, as opposed to having all those things that you want to show off set up in a line and you can just go through them one by one without having to think about which one you're going to grab next. You can just grab the next one in the sequence. That is what I believe my best explanation of the difference between their sort of band-aid fix using sprite sheets and hacks versus simply just playing the mp4 for the cutscene in an engine like Unity. So to sum up this segment of the video, like, um, yeah, I think it would really benefit the Friday Night Funkin' team in the long run, going into the finalization of the full ass game, to rebuild Friday Night Funkin' from the ground up in Unity or any other engine, just an engine that is more powerful than Hacks Flixel and is more capable of handling and optimizing all of the features that they plan on putting into the game. And like I said, the Kickstarter for the full-ass game made absurd amounts of money. Put some of that money into hiring competent game developers who can polish the workings of the game in a powerful game engine to the point that, like I said in the last video, everybody, even the seasoned rhythm gamers who have bashed Friday Night Funkin' in the past, can have a smooth experience playing. The playability of a game is ultimately the thing that matters most. I want to be able to play Friday Night Funkin' and have it so that if I miss a note or if I hit a note and don't get the sick I was expecting, I can know that 
those mistakes were my own fault. And with the issues such as latency, and just generally the game saturating my RAM and slowing my performance, when I make a mistake while playing the game, I have no way of knowing whether that mistake was my own fault or the fault of the game. And that's not a good thing. I want to reiterate, I don't want the full ass game to fail. I want it to succeed. Like I said, I love this game. It's charming. It was my first experience with a 4K rhythm game before I moved on to Osu Mania. But if something doesn't change about Friday Night Funkin' on a technically fundamental level, and if all the flaws that I mentioned are not fixed in the near future, then I have a feeling that there's a chance that the full-ass game will eventually be forgotten. Because the more experience you have with the game, and the more you sort of get into it, and the more you want to accomplish in the game, that's when you're really going to start to notice the technical flaws that are present. And that's when it's going to start turning you off from the game, because you can't get that score you wanted. You can't get all of those six that you wanted, because you're forced to hit every single note early, which is just not natural to try and do. And that's not what I want the people who have played Friday Night Funkin' for a long time and may not have noticed this yet to eventually notice. All I want from Friday Night Funkin' in the near future is a playing experience that is as smooth as a more refined 4K rhythm game like Osu Mania, Step Mania, or Eterna. Those three games have been in the 4K scene for a long time. And they, I believe, set a standard for 4K rhythm games that Friday Night Funkin' is sooner or later going to have to live up to. You know, I th this video was made entirely out of concern. Like, I'm actually really concerned about the state of Friday Night Funkin' as a rhythm game. What I've always said about Friday Night Funkin' is that as a game, it's actually pretty good, but as a rhythm game, it completely sucks. And as a rhythm game, I don't want Friday Night Funkin' to completely suck. I want my experience playing Friday Night Funkin' as a rhythm game to be the same experience I have playing Clone Hero as a rhythm game. So yeah, those are just my, um, those are just my thoughts. Once again, much like the previous deep dive I did, I've just had this on my mind for too long and kind of felt a need to get it off my chest, get it out there. Um, it seems almost like day after day, I get more and more worried about how this game is going to do as long as these technical flaws are present. I mean, if we go to the Kickstarter page for the full ass game, these are all of the features that they're promising. Like 20 new weeks for a total of 60 songs. New gameplay mechanics, cutscenes, local multiplayer, playable characters, online leaderboard, poly... Like, I don't think Haxflixel is powerful enough to handle all these features. They need to rebuild this game in a more powerful engine like Unity. But yeah, that'll be about it for this video, I think. Um, like I said earlier, uh, I'm upset, and the reason I'm upset is because I love this game, and I don't want to see it fail, but I'm really worried that it will fail if these technical flaws persist. But anyway, um, that's about it. I've been the Snake Rocks, and I will see you all later. Thank you all for watching.